Hello and welcome back to my humble show. Hope you had a great day, or shall I say a great night. It is night for me now, so hello and welcome back to my humble show. I'm your host for tonight and every other night, the Articulate Thinker, hopefully. Here to bring you art articles and articulation straight from Articulation Station, so be sure to like, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Don't forget to turn on those bell notifications while you're at it. I have some news for you, news which broke earlier in the day. Although it is now night and therefore the next day. Here's a headline from Daily Wire. State Supreme Court rules Trump not eligible to run in 2024 removes him from ballot. Of course, the state in question is the state of Colorado. And I'm sure you have heard at least a little bit about this by now. I'll see if I can break down the breaking news, though it has been broken by most people. It is a bit confusing to get into and I haven't gotten into it uh, to the extent which I would like to at least not as of yet but don't fret I will at some point read through the full ruling at least I plan to so I can more fully express my perspective express perspectives not just opinions and the ruling does read like quite an opinion piece, if you ask me. But we shall see. Feel free to disagree with me on anything I may say. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what you know. I am no expert on the matter. But what does it matter? I mean, it does matter in a court of law, but... Things have not exactly gone that far. At least to an, an extent of criminality on the part of Donald Trump. And yet, he is being potentially removed from a ballot because of criminality, or shall I say, insurrection. That's not what I say. That's what they say. But say what you may. This article is from Daily Wire, once again, more specifically from Ryan Savidra. And I'll scroll down, read through, and react to it. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. The Colorado Supreme Court removed former President Donald Trump from the state's 2024 presidential ballot on Tuesday after ruling that he engaged in an insurrection with his actions on January 6th of 2021, of course. The 4-3 to three ruling will be placed on hold pending appeal until January 4, the court said in its ruling, which makes it all the more confusing. Quite a lengthy document, I must say, I would guess I would like to do a deep dive into it at some point in the very near future. But, although I can't be very clear on everything, I'm going to call it like I see it thus far. Reading on here, a majority of the court holds that President Trump is disqualified from holding the office of president under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, the ruling said. Because he is disqualified, it would be wrongful, a wrongful act under the election code for the Colorado Secretary of State to list him as a candidate on the presidential primary ballot. Again, this is based upon a 4-3 to three ruling, so not exactly uh, one-sided decision. Split almost down the middle. Of course, when there are seven individuals, there is no middle, which could be a good or a bad thing. No tie. No tie. The Trump campaign responded to the ruling, saying uh, that... They would swiftly file an appeal, calling it a completely flawed decision that was deeply undemocratic. Surprised he didn't say demonic. So that is no surprise. Yes, it's going to make its way to the Supreme Court, and it may get overruled ultimately. I wouldn't be surprised at all, because we know which way the Supreme Court leans. Uh, Donald Trump had the fortunate task of tasking the Supreme Court with conservative justices of his choosing, at least a couple of them, and that might uh, benefit him in the end. And maybe it will again in the near future, or at least in the far future at some point, since he has so many other legal matters 
to deal with. But for now, he has this to deal with. This ruling, this pending appeal, this this hold, and so on and so forth. The language gets a little bit murky, and I think that's part of the purpose of it. It's to provide a lot of headlines, a lot of hit pieces on Donald Trump. And I am no fan of the man. But since I call it like I see it, I will say that in my humble opinion, in my humble perspective, according to the dots I'm connecting, it seems to me that some individuals do not like him. To put it lightly, to put it mildly, to say the least, the Trump campaign responded to the ruling by saying that they would swiftly file an appeal, yada yada, bing bing boom. Uh, we have full confidence that the U.S. Supreme Court will quickly rule in our favor and finally put an end to these un-American lawsuits, a spokesperson for the campaign said. And Donald Trump has said some things about it as well. But I'm trying not to get lost in the weeds too much here. Lost in the reeds too much here. The court said that they had little difficulty concluding that substantial evidence existed that showed a concerted and public use of force or threat of force by a group of people to hinder or prevent the U.S. government from taking the actions necessary to accomplish the peaceful transfer of power in this country. Of course, that group of people didn't do a very good job since, and seeing as how uh, the proceedings proceeded a couple of hours later, and lo and behold, Donald Trump is no longer president, but the argument here is that he was inciting, that he was engaging in an insurrection. Though he hasn't been charged for it or anything like that. The court said that because of this, the events of January 6th constituted an insurrection. Which we're supposed to believe proves that he is guilty. Civilly or criminally or something or another. We do not reach these conclusions lightly, the court said in its ruling. We are mindful of the magnitude and weight of the questions now before us. We are likewise mindful of our solemn duty to apply the law without fear or favor and without being swayed by public reaction to the decisions that the law mandates we reach. But again, and this is this is just speculation on my part, uh, the coverage thus far since this news broke has has been very anti-Trump, as per usual, at least in mainstream media. They are jumping right on board with this notion, this, this bandwagon of notions that I guess Donald Trump is done for or something like that, which is what they, they want, or do they? I mean, there are two different arguments that people on the right make. For example, if if I'm to somewhat criticize the right, people on the right, maybe even myself at times, argue, well, the Democrats want Donald Trump to be the nominee because they believe that they can beat him once again. And also, we argue, they want to throw Donald Trump in jail because they're scared half to death of him. So which is it? Maybe it's a combination of the two. Maybe they don't even know. But I'm just learning as I go. Might use this for a thumbnail. Moving on. I have a couple more quotes for you. A couple more headlines for you. And then I'm going to get into some of my on prescripted thoughts. Some thoughts which I shared on X just a little while ago. I, I posted a thread... Uh, one portion at a time, and I want to go through that. Some content, some uh, commentary. Here's another headline from the Daily Wire. Colorado Republican Party to cancel primary if Trump kept off ballot. I'm not even going to read through that article, but you get the point, you get the picture. Uh, Republican candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, first and foremost has said that he he vows uh, 
to remove his name uh, from Colorado if Donald Trump's name is not on the ballot. So that would be two names down. And how many to go? Well, they'll have to let us know because Vivek Ramaswamy or Vivek Ramaswampy, whatever you want to call him, doesn't really fit since he's from the outside. He's the outsider, which is why some people like him. Though I don't particularly like him at this point. And I definitely don't trust him at this point. Now, he, he is saying that all of the other Republican candidates should follow his lead. And in a sense, I agree with his defense of Donald Trump. Although it's it's a bit of a contrast from what he was saying a couple of years ago in one of his books about how Donald Trump was a loser. And how uh, Mike Pence was a respectable guy. In fact, uh, Ramaswamy said that he had a great deal of respect for for Pence. But today is a new day, and a lot of news is breaking, so I get that. People's opinions, perspectives change over time. Fair enough. I'm just saying, I don't personally trust Ramaswamy all that much. And he is acting like a bit of a hero here. And he is demanding that all of the other candidates... Uh, walk like him or else they expose themselves. Even though he has literally done nothing except for talk. He's running on rhetoric, not record. Take it or leave it, for better or worse. That is the truth of the matter, whether you trust him or not. Okay, here's a quote from uh, former Representative Justin Amash. Who was not a supporter of Trump when he was in office, by the way. So a little bit of an unbiased opinion here, I might say. Hopefully it is constitutional and sound in how it sounds. Donald Trump was not removed from office by Congress for engaging in insurrection. Well, at least not entirely removed by Congress. It was another one of those partial impeachments. Yes, I'll start this quote over again. You get the point, though. You get the picture. Donald Trump was not removed from office by Congress for engaging in insurrection. Donald Trump has not been criminally convicted in a court of law of engaging in insurrection, he said. Whatever you believe about whether Donald Trump engaged in insurrection has no bearing on whether he's eligible to run for president. No legislative, executive, or judicial body of state or of a state, should engage in extra-constitutional decision-making to disqualify a federal candidate from the ballot. So he says what they are doing is not constitutional. It is extra-constitutional. It is outside the realms, in a sense, of what is constitutional. Not to say it's outright unconstitutional, but then again, maybe it is, depending upon what the Supreme Court of Supreme Courts has to say about it. This is an accountability. It's an assault on due process of law, he concluded. It undermines our electoral system and threatens every federal candidate for office. And like him, I am not really a supporter of Donald Trump, though I did vote for him in the last go-around. I would prefer that he doesn't Give it another go around again. (sighs) But here we are. And if I don't like the arguments that other people are making, I'm going to try my best to make a better one. And I would encourage you to do the same. (laughs) Or else, come at me, bro. No, I agree with all of that. All that which was said by Justin Amash there. I thought that was... That was well said, which is why I shared it with you. Hmm. Not accountability, he says. So, in case I wasn't clear enough in my uh, additional commentary on the quote-unquote insurrection. Yeah, Donald Trump wasn't even really partially impeached for that. That's kind of the, the premise they ran with initially. But like the terminology of quid pro quo, when it 
it came down to brass taxes and they had to actually attempt to impeach him. Well, they didn't have to. They chose to. Sadly. Solemnly. Soberly. Solemnly. Ah. All those other s words. Um, yeah, they kind of had to switch up the terminology. So, no. He was never removed uh, from office by Congress. Uh, for engaging in insurrection. He was never criminally convicted in a court of law for engaging in insurrection or inciting insurrection, whatever word you want to go with. I feel like I might have said that he was never removed from Congress earlier. Obviously, he was never removed from Congress. He was never in Congress. And I'm I'm crossing that off just in case I did misspeak earlier. I don't know if I did or not. Here's a headline from ABC News. I might read through this article if I have time, but for now, just the headline. Trump ineligible to run for president in Colorado because of January 6th. Court rules in historic move. He quickly vowed to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. All right. And this will be a process. And I mentioned earlier the, the murkiness of it all, the muddiness of it all. Hopefully... Hopefully I explain some of that within this thread. And let me play just a little bit of this this clip from Jesse Waters' show on Fox News. If it'll play. Donald Trump has just been kicked off the ballot in Colorado. The Colorado Supreme Court ruled that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection against the United States on January 6th, and under the 14th Amendment, he's constitutionally prohibited from holding office. Therefore, Donald Trump's name will not appear on the ballot of the Republican primary in Colorado, and therefore not appear on the ballot in the general election in Colorado. That is, unless the U.S. Supreme Court takes the case. Unless. Donald Trump will be appealing the ruling. And the Supreme Court has until January 4th to announce if it will take it. We expect the Supreme Court to hear it before this Colorado thing sets a precedent and affects Trump's ballot access in other states. The Colorado lawsuit was filed by a Soros-funded outlet, decided by an all-Democrat-appointed Supreme Court. And the Democrat Colorado Secretary of State, within a split second, was celebrating on MSNBC. Look, I believe he incited the insurrection. There were big questions around Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, and the Colorado Supreme Court has weighed in in a very loud way. All right, so that was the Secretary of State there in Colorado. And baked into what she's saying is the predetermined conclusion that Donald Trump incited or engaged in an insurrection. Okay, based upon what? Based upon what exactly? What standard? What standard of law? Since he was not found criminally guilty of anything. At least not yet. Now now if now if some of these these cases he is involved in, some of these indictments he is involved in go through and he is actually found guilty of something then they may have a little bit stronger of a case to make. But they don't at this point. You know, it's innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. And they are they are robbing people of certain rights at this point, or at least they are attempting to do so. But the way Jesse Waters explains the removal of Trump's name from the ballot in the upcoming election cycle, I, I don't know if that's entirely accurate. If you actually read into the the document the judgment the ruling it almost sounds like his name isn't actually going to be removed it's just that they want to remove it in the future after a certain date if the supreme court does not shoot it down at that point, 
or before that point. So what they're saying is, we're going to put a stay on this. His name will be on the ballot up until this point at which, if the Supreme Court has not overruled what we want to do, then we will remove his name from the ballot. So I know what I just said is a little bit different than what Jesse Waters said. Which one of us is correct? I have yet to connect the dots on that. So correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what you know. Let me let this go a few more seconds. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment has to apply to the presidency because if not, it's a get-out-of-jail-free card. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Section 3. Section 3. 14th Amendment. So that's what they're relying on because they don't have anything else to rely on. This is a seven-minute long clip of Jesse Waters, of his show. I'm not going to let it go any further. You can find it for yourself. His caption read, The all-Democrat appointed Colorado Supreme Court ruled that Trump engaged in an insurrection against the U.S. on January 6th. This targeted lawsuit filed by a Soros-funded outlet is aimed at settling or setting excuse me, a precedent and denying the people their right to vote. Speaking of robbing people of rights, imagine if this were on the other foot. This shoe were on the other foot. The other uh, political party's foot. I'm pretty sure they would be talking about Jim Crow 2.0 again. You know, Jim Eagle. Yada, 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 bing, bing, boom. Hmm. Interesting if indeed it is an all-Democrat appointed Supreme Court in Colorado, state Supreme Court in Colorado. Is he saying that all of the members, seven members of that Supreme Court, are Democrats? If so, well then... Not all of the Democrats could even agree that this was the way to go, constitutionally speaking, since it was a 4-3 to three decision, right? I believe it's 4-3. to three. <clears throat> So I said, I wish Donald Trump wasn't even running for president this time around, just so you know. I'm not simping for the guy. But any preemptive partisan prosecuting should be called out for what it is. Without a legitimate conviction, I don't feel that this should even be in question. Sorry I didn't enlarge this text earlier. Or the video for that matter. I was experiencing some buffering on my end. Uh, didn't want to deal with that any more than I already am. The man has so many flaws, going back to Donald Trump, it should be easy bold letters, easy for Democrats to effectively campaign against him, but because they've endorsed and embraced their own brand of corruption and corrosion under the leadership of a geriatric joker in Joe Biden, they apparently can't find it within themselves to take the high road without first cutting the brakes of their opponents, such as Trump. That's right. I said it. Scrolling on down, I have some more... Uh, portions. Let me pause this for a moment, see if I can get rid of some of this buffering. I don't know if you're seeing it, but I'm seeing it. All right, I'm back, but I don't know if I'm back better than ever. We'll give it a go. Let's see, I linked I linked something else here. I'm going to pull it up for you. Speaking of pulling it up, here is, here is the actual documentation. 213 pages. No way I'm going to go through that right now. I did go through a little bit of it, looking for a particular part of it, to be precise. But yes, opinions of the Colorado Supreme Court are available to the public and can be accessed through the judicial branch's homepage at, insert website here. Um, some specifics here at the top, some fine print. In this appeal from a district court proceeding under the Colorado Election Code, the Supreme Court considers whether former President Donald J. Trump may appear on the Colorado Republican presidential primary ballot in 2024. A majority of the courts or court holds that President Trump is disqualified from holding 
the office of president under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Because he is disqualified, it would be a wrongful act under the election code for the Colorado Secretary of State to list him as a candidate on the presidential primary ballot. The court stays its ruling until January 4, 2024, subject to any further appellate proceedings. So the court stays its ruling until January 4 of 2024, after which we're going to be dealing with some uh, primaries. Which is why I'm saying I don't I don't know if his, his name is technically going to be off of the ballot. Maybe for a time. I, I just I just don't know the timing of everything and what the ruling of the Supreme Court is going to be. I'm just assuming they're going to overrule all of this. And even if they don't, it could be that uh, Donald Trump will still be available, in a sense, as a write-in candidate. I've seen people saying that he could just be written in as a write-in. That is possible. But, again, I'm no expert on this, so I'm learning as I go and just trying to let you know in the process. All right, so here's another clip. This of Jonathan Turley, who I have some respect for. I always like to hear what he has to say on it. And he had uh, some things to say during both of the impeachments against Trump, or at least one of them. Was it one of them? He testified during one of them. The first one, I believe. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Well, this court just handed partisans on both sides uh, the ultimate tool to try to uh, shortcut elections. And it's very, very dangerous. I mean, this country is a powder keg, and this court is just throwing matches at it. And I think that uh, it's a real mistake, but I think that they're wrong on the law. You know, January 6th was many things, most of it not good. In my view, it was not an insurrection. It was a riot. That doesn't mean that the people responsible for that day shouldn't be held accountable. Uh, but to call this an insurrection for the purposes of disqualification uh, would create a slippery slope for every state in the union. This is a time when we actually need democracy. We need to allow the, the voters to vote. We need to hear their decision. And the court here just said, you're not going to get that. Uh, in Colorado, we're not going to let you vote for Donald Trump. Ow. And, you know, you can dislike Ow. Trump. You can believe he's responsible for January 6th, but this isn't the way to do it. I mean, it is, you know, for the people that say they're trying to protect democracy, this is hands down the most anti-democratic opinion I've seen in my lifetime. I don't take any issue with any of that. If I had to play devil's advocate, I would respond to what he said about a slippery slope, you know. Sometimes politicians will argue, we, we can't go down this road because of the, the slippery slope which it will lead to, okay? You could say that about pretty much anything. You could use that as an excuse in regards to pretty much anything that any opposing politician tries to put forward. You could say, no, nah, we, we can't go forward with this because then it'll just be never-ending. It'll be a never-ending slippery slope of the shoes switching the feet or the feet switching the shoes. Whatever the proper way to say that is. Okay, so back to my main thread here. If there's a little link, I have to click on it to see what it is. doesn't show a preview of it below my uh, portion of the post. But I said in response to that, regardless of whether or not it's the most anti-democratic opinion, as he said, of a lifetime, it's clearly a decision meant to strip rights and suppress voters. So unless someone changes my mind, I feel that the partisan hacks responsible for this should be ashamed of themselves. And yes, I'm speaking of members of the court system because it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. And if it's like, if, if, if we're supposed to be like, well, they they are members of the court. They are supreme in their knowledge. They are the supreme beings, and therefore we cannot disagree. They know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. Oh, wait. There's a higher court which may overrule them, at which point the obvious takeaway will be that, yeah, 
The lower court didn't know what they were doing, or they did know what they were doing, and did so uh, with a an agenda rather than with justice. All right, so I say, then again, if this all backfires on them due to Supreme Court overruling or the appearance of martyrdom, what will they have truly accomplished besides maybe another bump in the polls for Trump? Right, so the people freaking out about this, uh, when there are so many ways in which it can still go right for Trump, keep in mind that the dude has found a way to profit off of a mugshot, so even worst case scenario could turn out to be best case scenario for that guy. Uh, that's partly because of his dedicated base, which uh, successfully continued to create narratives, which uh, seem to be favoring them, at least in the polls. Though uh, I'm not going to be one of these people who says, I don't trust the results of elections, but those polls? Pfft, look at those. Yeah. I'm a little bit skeptical of everything I come across. Link to judgment in Colorado's effort to remove Donald Trump from the ballot. I already showed you that document. If you want it for yourself, I'll link it to you in the comments below, though sometimes YouTube isn't fond of of links. Just let me know if you want to read through it and, and you can't find it for yourself. All right, so relevant context from the judgment, which... Uh, definitely calls into question any likelihood of this being anything more than a partisan publicity stunt performed for the sake of generating a new slew of headlines and hit pieces that may or may not backfire on the apparently desperate Democrats, ultimately. So I took a screenshot of a portion of the aforementioned document. Number seven there, for context. It's not actually that far down. Just have to scroll a little ways, and you will find it right here uh, but rather than read here I'll just read from my my screenshots since I went into the the work of well shooting the screen we are also cognizant that we travel in uncharted territory and that this case presents several issues of first impression but for our resolution of the elector's challenge under the election code, the secretary would be required to include President Trump's name on the 2024 presidential primary ballot. Wait, what? Okay. But for our resolution of the elector's challenge under the election code, the secretary would be required to include President Trump's name on the 2024 presidential primary ballot. So... But for the resolution, his name would be on there. But because of the resolution, it may not be? All right. Therefore, to maintain the status quo, whatever that means, pending any review by the U.S. Supreme Court, we stay our ruling. So they're staying their ruling until January 4 of 2024, the day before the secretary's deadline to certify the content of the presidential primary ballot. So wait, they're now staying their own ruling? So his name can be on the ballot? At least until January 4? Or whatever day a Supreme Court overruling is due? That's why I'm saying it's it's murky, it's muddy, it's very confusing, it's very complicated, if you ask me. But then again, I could be a simpleton. If review is sought in the Supreme Court before the stay expires on January 4 of 2024, then the stay shall remain in place. And the secretary will continue to be required to include President Donald Trump's name on the 2024 presidential primary ballot until the receipt of any order or mandate from the Supreme Court. Wait. All right, so if review is sought in the Supreme Court before the stay expires at the beginning of next month, then the stay shall remain in place and the secretary will continue to be required to include President Donald Trump's name on the 2024 presidential primary ballot. 
So, so again, they're referring to the stay because they stayed their own, their own ruling, their own resolution, or whatever it is they're calling it. They said, we think we need to rule this way and remove his name. Oh, wait, we're going to stay that. We're going to put that on hold until this date. So his name will continue to be on the ballot, but also we'll see what the Supreme Court has to say about what we really want to do, which is eventually remove his name from the ballot. Oh, my word. I'm sorry if I'm making this more confusing than it already is. Just reading through and reacting to. Tell me if you're coming to a different conclusion. Yeah. Until the receipt of any order or mandate from the Supreme Court. That's why I say it, it could very well be that this is intended mostly to generate headlines and hit pieces, which it has already managed to do, of course, because everyone is jumping to conclusions, and I'm trying my best not to. All right, so I, I shared something else similar to what I just went through, and this is a post from the Viva Fry. He has a history as a lawyer of sorts. He said, in summation, the Supreme Court of Colorado declared Trump should not be included on the primary ballot, but stayed their own court order pending an appeal to the Supreme Court, which will inevitably happen, which will stay the ridiculous court order indefinitely. All right, so they will cease to be able to jump through hoops. Okay, so the, the temporary stay might turn into a a permanent stay. Might. He continues, So Trump will be on the ballot, but they get to issue a judgment that will make headlines for the next few months. And if they are lucky, will enrage some people sufficiently to do something stupid that the media can then run with as well. Corruption to its core. So that's, that's a, a statement of motive there, and I don't want to speculate too much on that. I don't want to turn into a raging conspiracy theorist myself but what he was saying there at the end of that uh, was that what they're doing is not only in intended to generate headlines and hit pieces it's also intended to generate uh, acts of additional criminal conduct which will then be used against republicans just as january 6 has been yeah i i don't know if they're that smart I, I don't know if they're sitting there thinking, what can we do to get people to commit more crime so we can blame them uh, and therefore establish our political agenda more fully? I, I don't know if I'm going to go that far in terms of speculating over motives, but I get where he's coming from. But yes, he took a screenshot of the same portion of the document uh, as me. So you've already seen that. No need to rehash that. On to the next. Listen, at this point, I don't know if I believe that Donald Trump even believes his own claims about a stolen election. Uh, bite me, YouTube. But even if he's lying, I guess the premise is that a big lie equates to incitement or engagement in insurrection. And such a simple-minded standard would similarly incriminate an alarming number of establishment Democrats who have been known to claim that previous elections were stolen. So if the standard is truly, well, he said things about the election which we don't agree with. And heck, I don't even necessarily agree with him. And, and therefore, he must be lying. And, and since he's lying, well, a, a lie in his case equates to incitement or engagement of and in insurrection. And therefore, even if he hasn't been convicted yet criminally, we can apply the standard of uh, forced insurrection or the forced definition of insurrection and uh, keep him off the ballot. Okay, by that standard, that very simple-minded standard, that very vague standard, actually, an awful lot of Democrats should be kept off ballots, too. Just saying. So they are hypocrites. 
they are inconsistent to say the least. And I say this just isn't adding up. As for Section 3, and I have a constitutional page pulled up here, of the 14th Amendment, Section 1, Section 2, Section 3, which is the relevant section here, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office civil or military under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or a judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid, uh, or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may by a vote of two-thirds of each house remove such disability. Okay, that last line almost seems to suggest that that even if Donald Trump has some of his rights stripped, a two-thirds House vote could remove the disability from him. I don't know if I'm interpreting that correctly. That's just the way it sounds. Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each House, remove such disability. Each House. So is the Senate also being considered a House there? I'm not sure what all of that means. The most relevant portion is the portion about insurrection or rebellion. And clearly, taken at face value, it just does not line up with what Donald Trump has said and done. Not to, to defend him in his conduct. I'm simply trying to defend what is right and and rights themselves. I think there is an amendment which could apply to Joe Biden uh, much more efficiently and effectively than this applies to Donald Trump. I just don't think this applies to Donald Trump very much at all. I was referring to uh, Joe Biden's fitness to serve, by the way. Figure that one out. So yeah, I took a screenshot of that section three, highlighted the shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion, and so on and so forth. Here is where I I uh, continue my criticism of Donald Trump. And I'll pull up this thread, which I linked once again. I meant for this to be a short show, by the way. But what can I say? A lot of news to cover. I said, again, Donald Trump brings rhetorical retribution and it's all the reason the Democrats need to respond with legal retribution. And by legal, I don't necessarily mean constitutional. It's just, he says, he says retribution. They do retribution. That's what I've noticed. Everything that they claim Donald Trump is going to do, heck, some of the things he says he's going to do, they are the ones who end up doing it. While complaining about him hypothetically doing it. But, not to go easy on Trump here, here's what he was saying not too long ago about Hillary Clinton, who I can't stand. Nothing by comparison to what Hillary Clinton did. She shouldn't even be allowed to run for the office of president. Okay. Sorry, the, the audio is very low there. I cannot turn it up any further. But he was saying, prior to the 2016 election, that Hillary Clinton should not have even been able to run for president. That's what he was saying. He was saying, Hillary Clinton, who hadn't been convicted of anything either, like her or not, like her or not, uh, he was saying that she shouldn't have been able to run for president. Okay. Is he keeping that same energy now? No. Of course not, because he is the one uh, who is being hindered from running in the way that he would like. She shouldn't be allowed. Shouldn't be allowed, he says. And that is where the system is rigged. She shouldn't be allowed. 
Okay, so he said the system was rigged even then. Because if the system weren't rigged, she wouldn't have been allowed to run. So, in Donald Trump's words a few years ago, the system was rigged because they allowed someone to run against him. Okay. So he had he had tweeted something to the same effect back in the day too. Back in 2015, December 23 of 2015. And I uh, reposted that today. He quoted someone else who said, Why is Hillary even allowed to run? She's a criminal. So Donald Trump, he quoted that and said, Good question. Okay, so he was not only saying that she shouldn't run, be allowed to run, he was saying that she's a criminal, even though she hadn't been convicted of anything. Now you might get hit with defamation charges, defamation lawsuit over something like that. I have to be careful of those sorts of things. But Donald Trump, he says a lot of things. He had no problem saying, she's a criminal. But now people call him a criminal, and both he and his supporters say, what's the crime? What's the crime? What goes around comes around in a sense. I said, if Donald Trump talks it, the Democrats will eventually walk it. I'm not necessarily blaming him, but he certainly hasn't done himself any favors, although he attempts to do so on a regular basis. <sighs> Am I right? All right. And I also say here, P.S. I wish not to defend Donald Trump, considering how I spend so much time criticizing him these days. Uh, which I was hated on for doing in the comments of at least one of my previous videos, much shorter videos. All right, so again, without getting distracted, I wish not to defend Donald Trump, but instead to defend whatever is right in law and in logic. It just isn't enough to remove him from a ballot simply because of selective standards and subjective feelings about how he's a threat to democracy or whatever. And that's what we're hearing. But I would argue that as threatening as some of the things he says are, I have a, I have a fear that he may not actually do what he says he's going to do since he didn't the first time around. What did, he, what did he actually do to establish his dictatorship? Nothing. Nothing. COVID rolled around as a perfect opportunity for him. By the end of it, Democrats were demanding that he be more of a dictator. And he was like, ah, I'm just going to sit back and say some stuff. It's very amusing to now hear them once again claiming that he is going to once again establish the dictatorship, which he never established the first time around. But he says some stuff. He talks about retribution. He he was missed her locker up the first time around. As profound as that may have been, shortly after he became the president, he was talking about how Hillary Clinton needed to heal and how she was a good woman. All right. So, last share. From Jenna Ellis who was once very much in favor of Trump and favored by Trump. Helped him out, in fact. Worked for him, in fact. In the post-election legal processes. But that didn't turn out so well for her. As she got an indictment on her. And here she is now, saying things like, I find it terribly hypocritical how Trump is mad at being excluded from the ballot, yelling about election interference when he has been trying his hardest to have the RNC cancel debates and even the primary. I mean, he's been telling the other candidates to drop out. Now he wants to primary Chip Roy. <laughs> Slightly unrelated, but it's because Chip Roy supports Ron DeSantis. As do I. But no, I, I get where she's coming from again. I just think that we have to be careful, despite all of our criticism, hers and mine, of Donald Trump, to come back around to whatever is right. And I say, I completely agree that Donald Trump is hypocritical to complain. But if we view such hypocrisy as problematic, 
then we should refrain from being similarly hypocritical. We can't just keep switching shoes whenever we get cold feet and expect there to be a one-tier justice system. As far as I can tell, it's reasonable to condemn Trump's hypocrisy while defending his innocence until he's proven guilty, or something like that. Now, if there's an argument to be made that insurrection doesn't hinge on legalities or criminality, then someone will have to explain it to me in a way that doesn't sound like arbitrary application of condemnation against election deniers. That's what seems to be the case in the case of Colorado. They seem to be arbitrarily applying the condemnation against one particular election denier whom they accuse of the big lie while denying or at least ignoring the fact that so many other Democrats have also denied elections, including Hillary Clinton. So there's that. Yeah, if, if Donald Trump does end up in jail because of all of this, or at least at least because of the cases having to do with election denial, then I would say Hillary Clinton should also go to jail because of all of her Russian collusion claims and illegitimate presidency claims. That might be all I have time for. I am 50 minutes into the show. I got to go to bed. I haven't even had a shower yet. It is now 1.45 in the morning. I have to go to work here in a few hours. But I'm feeling pretty good about this. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You know, I did have this one ABC News article pulled up here. Ain't nobody got time for that, but. I might pause here for a moment just in case I want to use this as a thumbnail. There we go. And here I go. Peace.